Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. I hope you saw the last lesson on exponential properties involving products or involving multiplication. Because today, we're going to build on that. We're going to talk about the exponential properties that involve division. And then we're going to define a couple of oddball exponential terms. Before this lesson's over, hopefully you're going to understand the quotient of powers property, the power of quotients property, you're going to understand what a zero exponent is, and you're going to understand what a negative exponent means. Let's quickly review the exponential properties that involve multiplication, and then we'll introduce you to some exponential properties that involve division. In the last lesson, we talked about the product of powers property. And that just means that if I have a variable like x raised to a power, like 3, and I multiply that times x raised to another power, my answer is going to be x raised to the sum of those two powers, x to the 3 plus 4 power, or x to the 7th. We also talked about the power of powers property. And that just meant that if I had some number raised to a power, like x raised to the third power, and I wanted to raise that expression to a higher power, let's say the fourth power, my answer is going to be that base raised to the product of those two powers. So that x to the third power raised to the fourth power equals x to the three times four power, or x to the twelfth. We also talked about the power of a product property. If I have the product of two, two variables or two numbers, like x, y, and I want to raise that to the third power, I just distribute that 3 to both the x and the y, and my answer is x to the third times y to the third. Well, now let's move on to some exponential properties that involve division. And the first of these is the quotient of powers property. That should sound a lot like the product of powers property, and it is. When we're multiplying a variable raised to powers, we just add those powers to get our answer. Well, when we're dividing a variable raised to powers by that same variable raised to another power, our answer is that variable raised to the difference between the two powers. x to the m power divided by x to the n power equals x to the m minus n power. Let's look at an example. If I had 3 to the 4th power divided by 3 squared, I could do it the old-fashioned way. I could say that 3 to the 4th equals 81, and 3 squared equals 9, and 81 divided by 9 equals 9. Or I could use the quotient of powers property. And I could say that 3 to the 4th power divided by 3 squared equals 3 to the 4 minus 2 power. Or 3 squared, which equals 9. Lastly, let's talk about the power of quotients property. If I have a uh, division problem, or a fraction, like x divided by y, and I want to raise that to some power, like m, I just distribute that m to both the numerator and the denominator. And in this case, I get x to the m divided by y to the m. Let's look at an example. If I have 3 divided by 4, and I want to raise that to the second power, I simply raise my 3 to the second power, and then I raise my 4 to the second power. Well, there is a reason we're learning all this malarkey. There is a purpose for all these properties of exponents, and we're going to see what that is right now. We're going to simplify some fairly complicated mathematical expressions. For instance, if I had this expression, 4x squared divided by 3y all to the third power, and I was required to simplify that, what would I do? Well, if I remember these properties of exponents, and I remember PEMDAS, I'm going to be able to do this pretty well. 
Let's start with PEMDAS. PEMDAS says that the first thing we want to look at is what's in the parentheses. Can I simplify 4x squared divided by 3y? Well, I really can't. There's nothing in there that I can simplify. So let's move to the e in PEMDAS, exponent. And I do have a great big exponent out here that I could distribute to what's inside the parentheses. So let's do that. I'm going to take that 4x squared and I'm going to cube it. And I'm going to take that 3y expression and I'm going to cube that. And you'll remember that that's the power of quotient's property. The power of quotient's property says that I can distribute that power, in this case 3, to the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. Well, what do I do next? I've got 4 times x squared all raised to the third power, and then I've got 3 times y all raised to the third power. Well, that's kind of like the power of a product's um, uh, situation. So what I want to do is distribute that 3, that power of 3, to both the 4 and the x squared, and then also to both the 3 and the y. And it'll become 4 to the 3rd times x squared cubed divided by 3 to the 3rd times y cubed. And again, that's the power of a product property. Well, now what do I do? Well, let's simplify that. I can simplify 4 to the 3rd, and that becomes 64. I can simplify x, to the, or x squared raised to the 3rd power. What is that? That's the power of a power product. I simply multiply those two powers, and I get x to the 6th. I can also simplify 3 cubed, and that becomes 27. And I really can't simplify y cubed. That's just y cubed. So I had 4x squared divided by 3y to the third power. And I simplified it to 64x to the sixth divided by 27y to the third. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, this one's fairly complicated, and if you had some problems with it, don't get too upset. Just keep working at this, and it'll all come together. We've got a fairly complicated expression. a squared divided by b, all to the fifth power, times 1 over 2a squared. And we're asked to simplify that. Well, PEMDAS says the first thing we want to do is look at what's in the parentheses. But we can't simplify what's in the parentheses, so well, let's move on to the e in PEMDAS, which is exponent. And I do have a fifth power here that this expression is being taken to. So I could take that fifth power and distribute it to the numerator and the denominator of that expression, and it would look like this. a squared to the fifth power over b to the fifth power times 1 over 2a squared. That's the power of quotient's property. Now what do I do? Well, I see, first of all, I'm, I'm going to look at PEMDAS, and I see that I've got some parentheses here, but there's nothing inside that parentheses I can simplify. Now I look at exponents, and I see that I've got a fifth here that this expression's being taken to. So I've got the power of a power product property, and I can multiply those two powers and simplify that expression to read a to the tenth over b to the fifth, times 1 over 2a squared. Again, that's the power of powers property. Now, what do I do to simplify? Well, I think I just want to multiply this out. I want to multiply this fraction times this fraction. Because PEMDAS says I do parentheses first. There are no parentheses. I do exponents next. There are no exponents. Then I do multiplication. When I multiply a to the 10th times 1, I get a to the 10th. And when I multiply b to the 5th times 2a squared, I get 2a squared b to the 5th. 
But now let's go back to PEMDAS and see what we want to try next. P, parentheses. I got no parentheses. Exponents. I don't have any exponents I can simplify. How about division? Ooh, I do have like terms on the bottom and the top of this expression. I've got a to the tenth over a to the second. So I can simplify that. And I can use one of the properties to simplify that. a to the tenth divided by a to the second equals a to the tenth minus a to the second, or no, it equals a to the tenth minus 2, or a to the eighth. And that leaves 2b to the fifth on the bottom. And that is the quotient of powers property. Now, can I simplify a to the eighth over 2b to the fifth, or am I done? Well, I have no like terms on the top and the bottom of this fraction. So there's really no more simplification I can do. The answer to this question is a to the eighth divided by 2b to the fifth. Well, what we just did, if you ask me, is pretty hard. But what we're about to do is pretty easy. You just got to remember a couple of simple little things, and these tricks to exponents won't be a challenge at all. Let's start out with a number taken to the zero power. Just remember that any number taken to the zero power equals 1. Now I know that's really weird. That's very strange. Why is x to the 0 power equal to 1? Well, there's probably a really good mathematical explanation, but I don't know what it is. I do know this. If I have 2 to the first power, that equals 2. If I have 2 to the second power, that equals 4. If I have 2 to the third power, that equals 8. You can see that in each case, to go from one level to the next level, I just multiply the first level by 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. To go back from 3 to 2, I just divide that by 2 and I get 4. To go from 2 to 1, I divide the 2 by 2. I divide the 4 by 2 and I get 2. And if I want to go back one more step, if I divide the 2 by 2, I get 1. And if I take the 1 down one more level, I get 0. So that might help you remember why 2 to the 0 power equals 1. And it may have something to do with why it is true that 2 to the 0 power equals 1. But I think it's just easiest to remember that any number taken to the 0 power equals 1. Well, how about a number taken to a negative power? x to the minus 2. What's that equal? Well, this is real easy. All that negative exponent means is that I want to take the reciprocal of the, of the uh, variable. x to the minus 2 equals 1 over x squared. That negative sign just means I want to make this a fraction. For instance, if I had 4 to the minus 3rd power, that would equal what? That's right, it would equal 1 over 4 to the 3rd, or 1 over 64. Well, now think about this. If I had 1 over 4 to the minus 3 power, that minus 3 means I want to take the reciprocal of the 1 over 4 to the 3rd. And my answer will be 4 to the 3rd power. Well, now we've reviewed all the properties of exponents that you're going to need in order to simplify some pretty complicated exponential expressions. And we're going to review all those properties right now. But we're, we're, I'll be honest with you, we're not going to use the name of these properties. And, and if, you, if, if it's helpful for you to remember the names of these properties, by all means remember them. But I don't remember them. I just remember what the properties are. So if you remember how the properties work and forget their names, you're probably in pretty good shape. Let's start with this one. If I have a variable x taken to the m power, and I multiply it by a variable x taken to the n power, what's my answer going to be? 
Well, it's going to be the sum of those powers. My answer is going to be x to the m plus n power. How about this one? x to the m power raised to the n power. What's that going to mean? Well, I'm going to get the product of my m and my n, and my answer is going to be x to the m times n power. How about this one? The expression xy raised to the m power. Well, I'm going to distribute that m power to both the x and the y, and my answer is going to be x to the m power times y to the m power. How about x to the m power divided by x to the n power? That's kind of like the first one. In the first one, we were multiplying uh, two variations of x, and we added the exponents. In this case, we're dividing two powers of x, and we're going to subtract the exponents. It equals x to the m minus n power. How about this one? x divided by y to the m power. Well, I'm just going to distribute that m power to both the x and the y, and my answer is going to be x to the m power divided by y to the m power. Only two more things you need to remember. The first is that any number taken to the zero power equals, what's it equal? Well, for some reason it equals 1 x to the zero power equals 1. And how about a number taken to a negative power? Well, that negative power just means I want to take the reciprocal, and x to the minus m power equals 1 over x to the m power. You may want to go back to the last slide and write down each of those properties, because you're going to be able to use quite a few of them in trying to simplify this expression. The expression 2x squared times y to the minus 2, all raised to the minus 3 power. Hit your pause button, try this problem, and when you finish, hit your forward button to move on to my answer. Well, this one's pretty tricky, and if you got it, you understand these properties of exponents pretty well. Let's start with PEMDAS to figure out where to begin on this property. PEMDAS says look at the parentheses first. But when I look inside these parentheses, there's really nothing I can simplify. I have no like terms that I can combine. So I'm going to move on to the E in PEMDAS, which is exponents, and I've got a minus 3. Well, how do I distribute that minus 3 to the things inside the brackets. Well, I have to distribute it to each of the terms individually. I've got to take that 2 to the minus 3 power. My next term is x squared. I need to take that to the minus 3 power. My third term is y to the minus 2. And I need to take that to the minus 3 power. When I do that, I get 2 to the minus 3 power. I also get x squared to the minus 3 power, which means I'm going to multiply my 2 times a minus 3. I go to my third term, y to the minus 2, and I want to take that to the minus 3 power, which means I multiply my two exponents together. Now I can simplify this. 2 to the minus 3 power is 1 eighth. x squared to the minus 3 power is x to the minus 6th and y to the minus 2 to the minus 3 power becomes y to the 6th power. Well now I've got a whole bunch of fractions and uh, non-fractions and I need to co combine these and I've, it's helpful to me at least to think about what should be on the top of the fraction and what should be on the bottom of the fraction. The 8's on the bottom of the fraction, the 1's on the top of the fraction. My next term is x to the minus 6th. Well, x to the minus 6 equals 1 over x to the 6th, so the x to the 6th should be on the bottom of the expression. And my last term is y to the 6th, and that should be on the top of the expression. So, 
I can simplify 1 8 x minus to the minus 6 times y to the 6 and make it y to the 6 divided by 8 times x to the 6. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson and learned a lot about the principles of exponents when you're dealing with uh, quotients. And I have a feeling you're going to need some practice because this is kind of complicated. So go to www.mastermath.info and there you'll find some worksheets and some quizzes that will help you understand this concept. You'll also find a quick link that will take you to another website that discusses this concept. Well again, I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon.